Let me just preface this whole video by saying I'm a big fan of MKBHD and Waveform. I've always enjoyed his incredibly high quality content and I admire the way he's able to take very complex subjects and simplify them down into a way that is digestible and easy to understand for the masses. Basically, I think he deserves as much hype and as fame as he has. It's no wonder he's such a successful YouTuber because he's really, really good at explaining technology for the masses. So I have a lot of respect and I admire the team a lot. However, there were some comments made, of course, on the more recent Waveform podcast episode that got into Aptera, and I had so many people asking me, Drew, did you hear what they said about Aptera? Left and right, everybody was sending me clips from the podcast, so because so many people were telling me to talk about this, I figured I should do somewhat of a response, but this response is almost more so to the people asking me about the comments, less so them, because keep in mind, if you look at the podcast chapters and you understand the context of what they were talking about. They didn't do like a deep dive into Aptera as a company. They weren't doing some like thorough research project where they analyze every single aspect of the business and then determine an outcome from that research. No, this is just a quick Google search that basically come up for a couple seconds. And what they were actually talking about was a recently announced EV, the Xiaomi SU7. And I think it's safe to say that the Waveform podcast and MKBHD's channel as a whole, and they would probably agree with me on this is like a consumer tech, you know, smaller electronics, smartphone, tablet, laptop review channel first. That's what MKBHD started as, and I would still say that's kind of the primary focus of the channel. He's getting more into vehicle content as of lately, and I'm the same way. I started off with smaller consumer electronics and then kind of branched into EV, but my point is that is not the primary focus of the podcast, and it kind of shows occasionally when they do start talking about newly announced EVs. A lot of the time, especially on Waveform, it kind of feels like they're just kind of glancing at a few headlines, and in the subject they were talking about, the Xiaomi SU7, it kind of shows. Basically, the reason Aptera came up at all was because they were having a debate about whether or not the Xiaomi SU7 can actually get over 700 miles of range, which Xiaomi actually never said the SU7 could get over 700 miles of range, and there's so much added context needed to these statements that I want more people to be aware of the follow up leading into the Aptera subject, but Xiaomi's event actually announced that their vehicle would have, you know, an entry-level model with close to 400 miles of range and a longer range model that could get close to 500 miles, but it should also be mentioned they're talking about CLTC range, okay? They're not talking about EPA estimated range. These are two very, very different range estimating cycles, and the Chinese CLTC range estimate system is the most generous in the world. It is the most inaccurate of all of the world's different range estimators. So like the EPA, as much as we still don't get our EPA estimated range in our EVs, is honestly the closest. And then Europe is the next closest. And China's kind of dead last. They over-exaggerate range a lot. And just to give you a little bit of perspective on that, according to the CLTC, the long range Model 3 has a 440 mile range. Whereas we know with the EPA standard, the Model 3 long range is like over a hundred miles less than that. So looking at the Xiaomi SU7 range and expecting it to be the same as US tested EPA estimated range is very, very flawed comparison. And there's a lot of variables we're not accounting for here. Not to mention Xiaomi was referring to having an electric vehicle platform that could eventually fit 150 kilowatt hours inside it and that that could theoretically exceed 700 mile range. They were not claiming the SU7 would get that range, but that was kind of the whole subject they were diving into on the podcast and there's comments on the waveform YouTube video where you can see people correcting them about all of these things but it's fine I don't care as much about that because again it's like a consumer smaller electronic tech podcast first it's not a car focused podcast but that debate about can an EV get that much range on a charge brought up the Aptera in which Marquez made this comment about how people love to talk about but I don't think it's ever gonna ship you can watch the clip yourself here I'll play it for you so you know what we're talking about and the ev everyone keeps telling me to check out which has solar panels on it has three wheels and i also don't think we'll ever ship but they talk about it a lot is the aptera they claim up to a thousand miles on a single charge 
that's that it like looks like this yeah it looks doesn't like look like a, a car it looks like it's yeah. supposed it looks like Tricycle. a science project that's supposed to yeah. be a thousand miles it looks like a car that would be in that the future if image it yeah. looks like a car you would Society buy and then is. learn that the hummer Society. ev and the cyber truck are on the roads and be like i'm never driving this on the roads. yeah <laughs> i'm never driving again <laughs> it has a hundred mile an hour top speed the aptera has a claimed 400 miles of range on the 40 kilowatt hour battery and a thousand mile range how much does 100. it weigh though that thing's got to be 80 percent battery weight and as you can see it's kind of just a brief fleeting thought he essentially did a quick google search of like highest range ev or whatever and he just played around with the configurator a little bit and i think marquez is rightfully skeptical of aptera's range figures or the continuance of the company because marquez is a very busy tech focused guy he's reviewing all kinds of new tech coming out and if he had to say yes to every single concept car or every single prototype that people or businesses wanted him to review he would never have enough time in the day to review everything so understandably marquez's focus is very much on what is out what actually exists what do we have tangibly like what can i sit in what can i drive around in or what can i hold in my hand and in his world if he can't hold it if he's not sitting in it like if it's not on sale or in production right now it might as well not exist to him and it's all vaporware and that's understandable considering the amount of companies and partnerships he has to work with but i don't think that means marquez has looked into every Every single thing about the company he hasn't asked the founders or the CEOs everything they're doing to get the vehicle in production I would not be surprised at all if Marquez was unaware of all of the tooling going on for the Aptera assembly line right now and how much they've worked with Sandy Monroe on simplifying their manufacturing process so they need a lot less capital required than other electric vehicle startups do and I'll admit even I was very skeptical when I first read the headline about Aptera I think it was an inside EVs article way back in 2019 I saw 1,000 mile range solar powered EV that could get up to 40 miles of range per day for free. And I was like, there's no way that can't be possible. That has to be a scam. So rightfully, if you don't do much research on the company or the stage they're in right now and how much crowdfunding they've raised and the fact that they've gotten further in development than any other startup company has with the amount of capital they have available to them. If you don't know any of that stuff, you're just going to see those crazy high range numbers and great solar charging numbers and go, yeah, right, that does doesn't make sense. But the more you research about Aptera, the more all of the stars start to align, and the more questions you ask them, and the more answers they give you, the more the gears start turning in your head. That was basically the process I went through. I thought the numbers were too good to be true, so I did more research, I kept asking questions, and they kept giving me answers. You know, after 50 miles an hour, your aerodynamic drag is your biggest loss leader. That's what most of your energy is spent doing, getting wind, getting air out of the way. So that's why vehicles put such a huge emphasis on aerodynamics in the most ideal aerodynamic shape is of course a teardrop because that's the shape our own atmosphere turns water molecules into as they're dropping so naturally a vehicle that is the most teardrop like in its overall shape is going to be very good with its watt hours per mile because it's going to be incredibly energy efficient it has to move and be much more graceful to air than any other vehicle on the market after your aerodynamic efficiency gains comes your rolling resistance and that's primarily a affected by weight, which they ask about on this podcast, clearly pointing to the fact that they have not done much research on this, which it wasn't even a topic they were probably planning to talk about. So I don't blame them. I'm not mad at them or saying they need to try harder. Like, I'm just trying to explain the reason so many people assumed that, oh, Marquez has deemed Aptera must fail. And yes, Marquez is a very respectable, honorable member of the YouTube community and just the media in general. So I have a lot of respect for him. So I understand why people hold his opinion high, but a quick couple of minutes of researching would have helped you figure out that the launch edition Aptera has a curb weight of about 2,000 pounds, which is less than half of the most energy efficient EVs out there. Like my Model 3 rear wheel drive has a curb weight of about 4,000 pounds and Lucid Air Pure also has a very incredible range figure given the size of the battery pack and that is also a 4,000 pound EV. So you get less than half the weight and you get a much more aerodynamic design, then yes, it kind of makes sense that you could go around 10 miles 
miles per kilowatt hour, allowing you to go over 400 miles with a 46 kilowatt hour battery pack. And yeah, a lot of people rightfully are skeptical of the solar range estimator as well, getting up to 40 miles a day. How do you do that? It's really not that crazy once you get past the efficiency concept. The vehicle weighs less and it's much more aerodynamic than I guess it uses less energy per mile. Okay, well, if it uses less energy per mile, 40 miles is a lot more digestible in an Aptera than it would be in any other car, like the Prius that Marquez tested, which had solar cells on it and only got him a couple of miles back per day, but the Prius is a much less efficient vehicle. Aptera is absolutely covered with solar cells, about 700 watts worth, and they're estimating that 700 watts of solar can get about four kilowatt hours a day. Plug in any solar calculator you want in a sunny climate, estimating four kilowatt hours over, you know, 10 hours, 12 hours of sunny climate, that's not that big a stretch. So if you can convert four kilowatt hours into 40 miles, then yeah, it's just simple math. It's not like some magic alien technology that no one has access to that Aptera is claiming we're the only ones who could figure this out. No, it's just math. It's just science and it's just good design overall. Also, Andrew's concern on the podcast was with safety, which is another common gut reaction to the Aptera, but also very much uninformed in my experience. If you do any bit of research about safety precautions with a lot of vehicles, it's about side impact, front impact, rear impact, and how the occupants are prepared for. And even though it's a three-wheeler, it has a lot of car-like safety systems in place, like a full-size crumple zone longer than what is required by the NHTSA for US vehicles. It has airbags for its passengers, just like a car does. And the entire thing is built like a Formula One inspired roll cage around the occupants of the inside. And those kinds of roll cages are designed for drivers to walk away from collisions that were at, you know, over a hundred miles per hour. Formula One is a very dangerous sport. So modeling the design of the chassis off of that, I think is a very smart move. Not to mention the entire body of the Aptera is basically made of carbon fiber and it's in a more rounded design, which pushes the pressure outward. Meaning if you're in a side impact, the vehicle absorbs most of the blow, not its occupants. Like in traditional cars, they pretty much just fold inward because we have very flat doors. And basically we just put like cheap plastic and aluminum on the outside of our cars, which are slightly more durable than tissue paper, unless it's a cyber truck. But yeah, you get in a side impact in a regular car and that door's just bending inwards. In the Aptera, not so much. And also you don't have a front axle to be pushed inward during a crumple zone, activated collision, as well as those outward mounted wheel pants, which can absorb a lot more of the blow compared to a traditional vehicle where the wheels are mounted inward, closer to the occupants overall. And we go over all of these things in my videos in the past about Aptera's safety systems in place. And I asked all of these kinds of questions to the CEO in chief of design yourself. So if you want more of a thorough explanation for all of the safety measures they've built into this vehicle to make it as safe as they possibly can, honestly, probably a lot safer than a lot of four wheeled cars on the road, but people don't want to admit that. A lot of people just have this mentality that that fourth wheel magically makes the vehicle magically more safe. Like you are just instantly protected if there's two wheels behind you instead of one. In reality, they put a huge safety emphasis on the Aptera and I don't think it gets talked about enough because of course it's different and unique looking. So people's first reaction when they see it is just, oh, must be dangerous because I don't know what that is. I've never seen something like that before. But that's why I encourage people do more research about it. Ask more questions about it. The company's not afraid to answer your questions. They've answered every question I can think of. And there is a lot of active development going on to make the product better. And it's not crazy. It's not like impossible range numbers. And the 1000 mile range figure that Marquez was quick to write off is mainly just achieved by putting in more energy dense cells, which are in production on the market technically right now. They're not being used in electric vehicles yet, but Chris Anthony explained to us that in limited volumes, they have started building 21 120 cells. It's basically the same kind of cells they put in Teslas, which are 2170s. They're just building them to be a little bit taller. That way they can reuse a lot of the same connectors and parts for the battery pack as they do in the smaller range models as the bigger range models. And sure, the 1000 mile range Aptera will be a little bit heavier and probably closer to 2400 pounds, but still close to half of the weight of my Model 3 and my Model 3 gets four, occasionally five miles per kilowatt hour. Plus the Aptera is far more aerodynamic than my Model 3. So the concept of getting 10 miles per kilowatt hour and being able to pack a 160 six kilowatt hour battery pack inside. It's not really rocket science. I mean, it's impressive engineering. It's cool technology, but it's not impossible. So I wouldn't take Marquez's quick little brief comment of the company as, oh, this means that he has done his thorough research and asked every question to the company and decided that they are doomed from the start. He's a very busy guy 
reviewing all kinds of companies and all kinds of products all the time. So he's not going to do all this kind of research on every single startup, every single concept car. Like when the Aptera is in production and they actually start delivering, I expect Marquez will be one of the first guys to check it out because he's going to want to know if these range numbers are true and can this company succeed. But until then, he's going to stay focused on what's out, what's available today. And I'll keep you posted on what's on the horizon and what red flags I see with startups and more gold mines I see with startups. And why are not more people talking about this one? This is actually a really good idea. This company has done their homework and this company, I don't know what they're talking about. But if you guys have any other particular questions for me, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. So thanks again. Have an excellent rest of your day.